Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be expanding on the game that I made in the previous video, which is a 2D side-scrolling game. And here we have the code from the previous video, the three classes. And in this video, I'm going to be adding a, a bulleting system, so firing system, to our main character. So you see our code from the previous video, it's just the character moving left-right. He can jump, and obviously the side scroll, the background scrolls as you move. So to add this, to add the ability for this uh, person to fire, we are going to have to make a new class. So we go and make a new class here, and we can call it uh, bullet because it's going to be each. The, uh, this class is going to represent each bullet that the character is firing. So in this bullet class, we're going to have to make a basic criteria for each bullet that the uh, that the character fires. So, first of all, we're going to import java.awt.star and we are going to add some attributes. So, each bullet is going to have a x and y coordinates. So, that's pretty obvious. It controls the location of the bullet. So, any other class can call this uh, call these attributes and get the x and y position of the current bullet. Usually, the y will not change for this game. And next, we're going to need an image for the bullet, so image img, and we're going to load that up as the image of the bullet, which will be so stored on the hard drive. So this is a random bullet image I found online, so I'm just going to use this as an example. And we store it under C slash bullet, and then we start the constructor of this class. And the constructor, public bullet, is going to be called whenever... Uh, we call this um, we call this class. We instantiate this class. So we're going to have a starting x value and a starting y value for this bullet. And we're going to set x equal to the starting x, and we're going to set y equal to the starting y. So the initial x and y coordinates will be what the what the whatever is uh, passed into this class. So right now we have a bullet at this x and y coordinate, and we are going to load up the image as image icon new bullet is equal to new image icon, and then here we put our c uh, bullet dot png, and as you can see, this is the same as we did earlier for loading up the image of the of the everything else in the game. So we import the image icon here. And we set img equal to new bullet dot get image. So now our image of bullet is stored in this img. And we close this constructor class, but we need another we need another variable to see if the bullet is currently visible. Because remember, if the bullet goes off the screen, we don't want to show it anymore. And also when we advance this game further if the bullet hits something we don't want to show it anymore so we create another variable here and we can make it a boolean visible is equal to we can set the initial value to true because we know that at first this uh, this bullet will be true initially and at, or we can just set visible equal to true here in the constructor so Initially, obviously, our visible will always be true. And now we got to make a method for this for our class. And this is the this is the only method we need is the public void move. And remember, this move is very similar to the move we made in the previous at a previous point, which was in our dude class right here. So this was moving the dude. This was moving our main character left and right. This move is going to move our bullet left and right, but actually just right because the bullet's not going to come back. So we just do x is equal to x plus, and you can put a bullet speed here. So I will. I'll put x plus two. So it's going to move two milliseconds. Or sorry, two pixels every five milliseconds. Five milliseconds because we're calling our paint every five milliseconds. So we finish this off and we put um, a last condition here. We check if x is greater than our board width. 
So our board width was 700, 700. And so if it, x is greater than 700, then we want to make visible equal to false because then we don't want to print it anymore. And later on, we're going to have to add a uh, condition here. If bullet hits something, then don't print it. But for now, we're just going to print this in. So now that we've done these two, we can go ahead and we need somewhere to um, to make the new bullet and call this move method. So to make the new bullet, we are going to go to our dude class because the dude is get, who, the person who's going to fire a bullet. So that's why we need to go here, and we're going to create a new method called fire. So public void fire. So this method gets called when we fire. For for example, when we press the fire button in our game, and what this does is we create a new bullet. So bullet Z is equal to new bullet. Sorry, this should be capital. So this creates a new object of the bullet class. So that's what what we're basically doing. We're basically creating a new bullet, and we need an initial uh, initial value for we had here and in start x and start y for the bullet. So to get that, we're going to get our current position, our dude's current position, and we're going to give that as our starting x and y because when we when we fire the bullet, then we want wanted to seem like it's coming from our main character. So we're going to put here, remember if we watched the previous video, left controlled where the where the main character was on the screen. So this variable here controlled where the main character was on the screen. So we're going to put our initial x to be left plus the width of our character image. So it's 60. So we want it to seem like the the bullet's coming out of the front of the guy, not from behind him. So that's why we put that, and then we put y plus 154, which was the length, over 2. So it's coming from about where his chest is. It's just an example. So we pass it these two values. This is going to be our initial x and our initial, initial y. And then we need to do uh, one thing, is that we need to create an array of all of our bullets that are currently on the screen. So remember, in Java, an array has to have a limited size. So we want an array that can grow forever. So we're going to use an array list. So we're going to create a static array list. And if you're not sure what the array list is, it's just an array which continues to grow as you add things in it. So static array list bullets. And we're going to import array list. So our array list here is going to basically have all the Ob all the bullet objects in it and when we're in the paint method we're just basically going to print every single bullet object that we have so we're going to go z sorry uh, bullets so to add something to our bullets uh, array list we just go bullets dot add and then this z here it gets added to this bullets now this the static array doesn't have to have a type but it can if you need it and actually one thing i forgot in this previous one was putting a return statement. So int get x, return x. So I've added return statements for each of these uh, attributes we have. And so this basically allows other classes to access these. So it's just int get x, return x, get y, return y, and so on. So now in this, we also need a return uh, return thing. So public, or a get method. So public static array list get bullets. So this is going to return our whole array list of bullets. So return bullets. So our, all, everything in bullets gets returned. And now when we call the constructor in this, we want to be able to uh, uh, initialize bullets. So here we've just declared bullets. We want to go bullets is equal to new array list. Okay we are going to go ahead and go down here and see that we have a lot of actions that we do when we had this from before that when we press a certain button but now we need to add a certain action for key pressed so we copy this and we paste it here so if key pressed is vk underscore spacebar 
So for example, for pressing the space bar on our keyboard, then we, then we want to be able to fire. So just call the fire method. And remember the fire method creates a new object from the bullet class and it adds it to the array list. So now we're done with this class. Now we need a now we need a new um, and now, now we need to make some changes to our board class. So our board class has our paint. Now we just need to print. Now we know how many uh, bullets are supposed to be on screen. Now we just need to print our bullets. And that's going to be done in the main class. So right at the end of the, uh, sorry, in the paint class. So right at the end of our paint class, I'm going to add something to print everything. Print basically everything that's on screen. So right in here, we're going to create an array list called bullets is equal to so do dot get bullets okay so the reason why I need to create a new the reason why I created a new array array list is because this do dot get bullets returns our array list as an array list so we need to create an array list to store that array list so now we're going to now basically we have a bunch of objects inside of an array and we want to print each one. So for this, we're going to use an, a loop from zero to uh, bullets dot size. So this just returns the size of the bullets array list and w plus plus. So we're going to loop through the whole array list and we're going to get each element. So remember, each element stored in this is an object of the bullet class. So we need to get that bullet we need to get that object by creating a new um, bullets dot get w so we need to create this object to store this and we need to just cast this to a bullet now at this point we have gotten our bullet and we've stored it in this m object so this dot get returns whatever is in the array list at a specific index now we draw our image so draw image and we do m dot get image because that is that returns our image here of bullet and so we're now it asks where we want to draw it so that's just simple m dot get x and m dot get y okay so All right, and then the last one for the observer, we just put null like we did for every other one. So now we have we now have drawn our uh, bullet, and but there's one last thing that we need to do, and that is that when we when we go to our action perform method, we're not actually calling any of this uh, stuff that we just did. So we need to go back here. Our array list here as well so actually we can just copy this code here so we copy this code and we loop through each element again and we store the bullet in this object M but now instead of drawing we're going to call the move method because we never actually call the move method so remember the move method was in here this moves the uh, bullet so Essentially, we're going to just ch just all we have to do is m dot move, but we don't want to call the move method if our bullet's not even visible. So we're just going to do a quick check if m dot get visible is true, then call this. If it's not visible, then there's no point of moving the the bullet. And as a matter of fact, if it is not visible, then we are going to go ahead and do bullets dot remove, and we're going to remove this index from the, the bullets array list. So that's all we have to do and it's pretty logical as to what we are doing and we created a, a bullet class and this bullet class has all the attributes of the bullet and we can create multiple objects of the bullet class so in, in order to uh, have multiple bullets and we create an array list that stores our all our bullets on the screen right now and we basically print each and we go through the whole array list and we print each uh, bullet on the screen 
So as you can see, we have our same game here. And now when we press space, a bullet gets launched. So we can launch as many bullets as we want here. And we want to, as a matter of fact, we can actually also put that when we jump and launch it, then it gets launched at a higher at a higher value. But in any case, uh, that can be done yourself. Now, one more thing I want to do quickly before I end this is uh, you want to you want to be able to control our ammo. You you don't want to have infinite bullets being it being shot. So in many games you have ammos. In shooting games we have ammos. And we go to our dude class and we, I'm quickly going to do this. I create an int ammo is equal to 10 and and then inside our fire method we only fire only fire if ammo is greater than 0 then fire. If we if we don't have ammo then we can't fire, right? So only fire if this is true and ammo minus minus. So when we do fire, remove one from ammo and we f we fire. And then one more thing in the paint method, just to keep track of it, we're going to create, we're going to write down how much ammo we have left. So static font, and we're going to call it font is equal to new font. And you don't have to worry about this, but it's basically just a the way to declare fonts in Java and to print things out and we're gonna make it font dot bold and we're gonna make it the size of 24 and right at the end here we're going to go to our paint method and we are going to print out g2d dot set font and we're going to set it as font and g2d dot set set color and we're going to set it to color dot blue and lastly, we are going to g2d dot draw string, and we're going to write ammo left plus p dot ammo, and uh, we're going to draw it at 500 and let's say 20. That's the pixels. So now our final final modification has been finished, and we run the game, and we see at the top left we have ammo left 10. And when we fire, this number goes down, down to zero, and then we can't fire anymore. So I'm trying to press space, but it's not firing. So that's done. Uh, this was our first modification that we did. Next up, we're going to quickly look at how to add some uh, enemies and some interaction with the enemies. Stay tuned.